I'm not sure why, but people tend to get scared when they need to upload files via an ASP.NET Core API to, for instance, Azure Blob Storage. Are you in the same situation? Does the idea of managing files through an ASP.NET Core Web API give you goosebumps? In this case, this video is right for you because in this one we will cover everything you need to know to get very familiar with uploading files through ASP.NET Core to Azure Blob Storage. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Uploading files through an ASP.NET Core Web API to Azure Blob Storage is a breeze. Don't you believe me? Well, stay tuned because in this video we'll implement a files handling API from scratch with everything that we need to upload and manage files to Azure Blob Storage. And there is also a huge bonus because we will not just upload files, but we'll talk in depth about how we can manage files, how we can download files, when we would need to download files, how we delete files and everything around that. Here we have a very basic API that we will build out throughout this video. And we have some very basic methods dedicated to file management that we have, first of all, list all blobs in which we will list all the available blobs in a certain container that might be useful because consumers might want to know exactly what files do we have in our container. And then obviously we have this upload and this download methods that would upload the files and also download the files. And we will talk a little bit more in depth about why we would need such a download method in our API. And last but not least, the last thing that we would like to do probably with files is to delete them when they are not needed anymore. We also have created a storage account and we have already created a file container which is empty by now but we'll see that throughout this video we'll have to play with a lot of files and we'll see that we can add files to this container through our API. To get started I would like first to create some models that we would need while working with this API and the first model that we will need is the blob DTO and here in this blob with DTO we would have a few properties like the URI of the blob the name of the blob the content type and the stream like the content of the blob if it is needed and then i would like to also have another dto that would be dedicated for actions that implies management of the files like uploading or downloading or deleting this might be kind of like a blob response dto so let's add this new class here and let's call this blob response dto and this blob response DTO would contain this type of properties like the status, like if we had an error and the blob itself that we have managed. And this, once again, this DTO is, or we will be using it for actions that would imply in one way or the other, kind of like uploading or deleting the blobs. Next, we'll need to create a file service and let's click here, add a new class and we'll call this file service. Okay. And in this file service, we need to have all the information that we need to work with the error blob storage. So I will add here some information like the storage account, which is this storage account, the key, and then we have this blob container client. But in order to be able to use this, we need to add a NuGet package. Let's go to manage NuGet packages and that new NuGet package should be Azure storage blobs. So let's install this. Okay, done. And now we can just implement or add the missing using. And then we will need the constructor, obviously. And in the constructor, we will kind of like initialize all the clients that we need. That would be something like this. But once again, import the missing references and now we should be good to go. So we create this storage account shared key credential based on the account name and the key so that we are able to authenticate and use our Azure Blob storage in our story, uh, Azure storage account. And then what we do actually is we use this Blob service client to create already a Blob a container client that contains already a reference to our container where we will manage the files like the files container if you are not 100 percent familiar with azure blob storage and how to work with azure blob storage from a dotnet application i have already created a video and you can see a link to this video on the screen right now in the corner upright and obviously also in the description of this video also if you like this type of content don't be don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like that video it will make it easier to discover for others and if you are for the first time on the code wrinkles channel hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified whenever we have something new on this channel now that we have this behind us, let's go to implement the methods that we will need in the service. The first one will be the method to list all the blobs async. And what we do here is we create this list of blob DTO. Blob DTO is our DTO that we have created previously. 
and then what similar to what we have done in the previous video we kind of like wait for each because this that's an i async enumerable that is returned and we get the blobs async and then what we do is we create the uri and we build a full uri and then based on that full uri we are able to create a new instance of the blob dto for each one that we iterate through and then at the end we add this basically to our list and then we return the files so it's very easy nothing very complicated and very similar to what we have done previously like in the previous video that i have mentioned earlier and now comes the more tricky part how do we actually upload files when we have an api and i have already created a method here and i want to explain this now when we are working with apis we usually get the files in this form of an iphone file this means theoretically that files should be posted actually as form data and we'll look into this when we will run the API and exactly we'll see exactly how the file is actually uploaded. Now the idea and why this is this is a little bit more tricky is because in this case when we are using with an API and we have this iForm file we don't have the file somewhere on the disk so we can we, we can't just simply provide a file name and a path to the file and just upload it to Azure Blob Storage. In this case, what we would need to do is we need to use a stream to actually upload the file to Azure Blob Storage. And that's exactly what we do here. First of all, we create a blob client based on the file name that we receive in this iPhone file. And then what we do is we create a new stream that contains the data and we open the stream. And then we use the client to upload async, but we provide the stream instead of providing just a file path. Now, what we do is obviously when everything is ready here, we create the response status error in this case is false. Once again, here, I want just to show you exactly how we can work with Azure Blob Storage in an API and upload files. Obviously here we would have try catches and catch exceptions that might be thrown and things similar to that. And this response might even be error in certain cases if we get an error back. But now I just wanted to focus on the functionality. And then obviously what we do is we return the response when it is ready. And the next method that we want to implement or action is downloading file. So it's basically the reverse of what we have done previously. Now when downloading file here the things are a little bit different because in this case the consumer just need to provide us a file name and we need to kind of like check in the container if we have a file with this specific fi file name so if the blob exists and if the blob exists we kind of like need to download it as a stream and return it to the consumer also as a file so that's exactly what we do here once again as we did in all the other methods we just we just create a blob client having this blob file name as, as an incoming string parameter and then what we're doing is exactly this we here await file exists async and this will return us an answer or it will return true or false like if the files exist then what we want to do is okay we want to once again uh, open read async so we open the file and then we have this stream blob content equals data so we get the data uh, into a stream and then a uh, content await uh, wait file download content async so this downloads the file itself and when this method executes and is finished we have basically a file and then what we do here is we capture also the file name and the content type and based on this we create this new blob dto that we want to return which contains basically all the data and the file and everything or all the information that we would need to kind of like provide to the consumers last but not least we need to implement a delete method and the delete method is probably the easiest one to implement here in this case once again we just need to get a file name as a string and what we need to do is kind of like check if that blob exists with that specific file name and if exists we have this await file delete async and after we delete the file we once again return this blob response dto now that we have the service the next step would be to add this service to the dependency injection container an important thing to note here is that in the official microsoft documentation it stands written then you can register this service or services that work with the azure storage blobs sdk as a singleton service so let's do that therefore let's add our file service as a singleton service to our di container 
And I will also reference what is missing here and we should be good to go. And we can move over to our files controller and we can take right now these methods, all of them one by one and implement them. Before we do that, obviously we need to kind of like use the private fields to have or to get a file service instance in the constructor through dependency injection. Let's make a little bit of space here and just add everything that we need. So the private read only field for the file service and then we get the file service injected. And now we can implement all the methods that we need here. For the list async, the things will be very, very simple. What we need to do is kind of like just use the file service and perform all the actions that we need. And this is very straightforward. We just get the list of blob DTO and then we return this OK and the result. Then we have this upload file that we need to implement. And remember, we have on the service that upload async method that we have created and we can use this providing this iform file our method and it will upload this file to our Azure blob storage instance. And now comes once again the more fun part which is the download and the implementation for the download it would look something like this. So once again we have this file service and we say here download async and we provide this string file name. However the important thing to note here is that in this case we don't return just a regular OK result. In this case, we want to return a file because that's the, that's what the download is all about. We don't return JSON in this case, but we return a file. We have return file with the result, the content, the content type and the result name. I'm sure at this point, some of you might ask, but hey, Dan, why do we need to implement also download functionality? Because when we upload files to Azure Blob Storage, we get a URI back. And based on that URI, we can actually use it, for instance, in our single page applications if we want to display images. My answer to this question is yes. If, we, if it comes to handling images and using images in your single page application that or have or working with a URL from Azure Blob Storage might just work. But file management in systems that we build usually go way beyond just having to work with images. A lot of times you need to be able to download files, like maybe your application generates some reports and those reports need to be downloaded by a user or maybe other types of files. And last but not least, we would also need to implement this delete method. And that's very simple to implement. We just use the file service once again and provide the file name that we get here as a param in our action. And then we just execute the delete and we return the result also with an OK in this case. So now we have implemented everything. So the obvious next step is to see how everything works. So let's debug actually the application because I also want to place a breakpoint here in this upload. So let's debug the application. Okay, so first of all, we know that our container is empty. So the first thing that we need to do is to add a new file. And if we go here to Swagger, we see that if we want to try it out, we need to kind of like have this file uploader. And what we can do here is just use this to upload a file that I already have pre-created is this codewrinkles.txt. So let me just open this file now. And right now you see that when we will send this request, it is not sent as application JSON, but it is sent as multi-part form data. What this means is that if you have a React application or an Angular application, or by that matter, even a regular JavaScript application, if you make a request to upload a file, you don't need to make that request as JSON, but you need to make that request as multi-part form data. And in that case, everything will work like a charm. So let's click on execute and we hit our breakpoint. And if we take a look into what we have here in this file, we see that we have kind of like some information like the content description, like the content time, the file name, and we have also the data of the file. We also know how long the file is. So we have a bunch of information about the file that, that is being uploaded. Let me then just take away this breakpoint and execute the application further. And theoretically now this should be uploaded correctly. Here we see that we have the response and the response even we get the URI. That's also a very important part. So if you are building this throughout an API, it's very important that when you return the response to the consumer, it should also contain the URI for that specific blog. Now let's take also a look at our Azure portal. And if we just refresh this, we'll see that we have this brand new file here. So everything was uploaded correctly. Let's go back to our swagger in this case and let's for instance right now try the first method like I want to list them. So try it out, execute and that would obviously list me all the files that I have or all the blobs that I have. In this case I just have one with the URI, with the name and with the content type. 
Now, the next thing that I would like to do probably is as a consumer, I know that I have this file with this specific file name. So I might want to kind of like maybe download that file. So the next thing that we want to test out is actually that download feature. And this is this get method with this file name. And if we want to try it out, we need to give the file name. And the file name should be called wrinkles.txt. So let's execute this. And we see that in this case, we got the response. But as the response was actually a file, we have this link of download file. And if we click on it, obviously it will be downloaded like it happens regularly. Obviously, last but not least, there is this delete method. And in this delete method, if we try it out, once again, we need to provide a file name and then execute. And we see that it was successfully deleted. So if we go back to the Azure portal and if we click on refresh, we see that the file is gone. So it's not here anymore. That's it. See, it was not complicated at all. And now I guess you can go with confidence and head over to your real projects and implement and start working with files, especially when you want to upload them to Azure Blob Storage with a certain degree of confidence. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like that video so that others might discover it easier. Also, if you are for the first time on this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there is some new content on the channel. And if you have any type of question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section of this video and leave a comment and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.